So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my spoiler-filled review for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Quite obviously, I'm not going to go beat by beat talk about everything. It's just going to be a general review that includes spoilers so you can understand why I love the film so much. So you can understand where I'm coming from and stop being so defensive in my spoiler-free review. Okay, let's go over the basics, because this is the internet, and people on the internet specifically seem to forget what an opinion is, and that somebody is allowed to have an opinion or a ranking of a film that they enjoy more than others. Most people that are subscribed to this channel, that have known us for a while, know my favorite MCU film is Captain America the First Avenger. That's it. That's my favorite MCU film. I stand by that. It is my favorite MCU film. Not yours, it doesn't have to be yours. In my opinion, for me, it is my favorite. Does that make sense to you? You are allowed to have Guardians 2 or even Thor The Dark World, and that's great. That's what makes us each individuals with our own favorites, least favorites, and our own take on these characters and what we like. Getting very defensive that I called Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings a god-tier MCU film, in my opinion makes you look stupid. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about why I love the film so much and why it's my number two favorite MCU film. Yes, now you can get angry at that as well. You're free to do that because you can't grasp what an opinion is. Now let's talk about this Shang-Chi. Okay, so first and foremost, the uh, breakdown of the Mandarin and who he is, who he's been throughout the ages, how they play that off. How they play off their use of the rings. How they play into the Ten Rings crime organization throughout history. And what they may or may not have been involved in. The different iterations of the Ten Rings that have existed. How Wenwu as a character references the events of Iron Man 3 and what was going on. Why he let that happen. And what he was doing at the time that occupied him. That's all here. I love that. It retroactively does go back to Iron Man 3, takes some of those elements, and puts them in a new light so you kind of understand. And it goes all the way back to Iron Man 1, for example, as well, and gives you some idea of what was going on with the Ten Rings. Now, at the same time, I love what they did with when we win this, because we see the corruption, we see why he is the person he is, and we see what ultimately makes him evil. And I really like the spin on the character's history where these rings and what they're sort of uh, meant to do, their powers, and how he's able to use them to control everything is keeping him from really being a top tier, almost a hero if you will, because he chose the villain path. And he does that because of the death of his wife at the hands of the Iron Gang. Now, that has no relation to Iron Man or anything. That's just what the gang is. And we see how he puts the rings back on after all this time and then becomes truly the villain of the story. But with that in mind, when we look at Shang-Chi and his story, I really like the character development. You feel like that there's a lot of uh, things that many foreigners in this country, in the United States, specifically know about and go through and the family connection and all that again as somebody who wasn't born in the united states who moved here when i was 10 this lines up with me there's all this like you know here's your family here's everything but d don't you dare do something that we don't want you to do because we're going to look down upon you again there's always elements of that and they represent that here well from different angles and different characters coming together i understand why for some people it might not be their thing. For me, it clicked automatically. And another thing that really clicked with me was the action. Um, how do I put this? Uh, imagine a Jackie Chan film on superhero steroids. That's sort of how you look at these fight scenes and everything in them. Specifically, as the film continues to go on and they get more comfortable with everything that's happening in these action sequences... It's not shaky cam. They just pull the camera back and let the martial artist do martial arts. And it shows because it is fast and hard-hitting 
and you feel like that there is a weight to everything that's going on, which I really enjoyed. Up until there isn't weight, because it becomes a straight-up comic book movie with a flying dragon and an even bigger flying dragon and other pocket dimension beast things. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on in that third act of the film, which again, for me, I thought was great because, as most of you know, I'm a huge Iron Fist fan. Like, giant Iron Fist fan. My favorite comic book run of all time are the Iron Fist runs. So, they actually use a lot of Iron Fist world building and lore and things like the little pocket dimension and the yearly gaps and everything. That's all in here, which really, really sat well with me. And then, of course, there is the ending of the film where we see his sister is going to become the new Mandarin, the new leader of the Ten Rings. Shang-Chi... He's already being recruited into the Avengers, and we see this bigger world that's being set up for the sequel, which, again, I did like because the crime syndicate they represent in this to what it's going to evolve into in the sequel is going to be a more modernized version that lives by new rule and new standards with Shang-Chi's sister and not by the old ways, which, again, is important in this film. It's about the old ways what you leave behind, the family, the lifestyle, everything. And Mandarin very much based his operation on the old ways for a thousand plus years. And that ultimately leads to his downfall because he couldn't see that the old ways don't work anymore and you can't just rule with an evil iron fist grip. I guess that's the best way to put it, right? Um, that's going to change. Again, I love everything they did with the setup of the new world how they lean into the insane by the end of it, and how quickly they manage to expand this entire new corner of the Marvel Universe, which has so much more to explore, because there's just enough hints of what comes next, such as, where are the rings from? We get a little bit, but there's definitely a lot more. And at the end, when Captain Marvel and the Hulk are like, so yeah, uh, these are a problem. They're giving off a beacon into space. Well, what are they calling? I guess we're going to explore that either in a giant team-up film or Shang-Chi 2 because it's got to be a major factor. So a lot goes on. It's a great Marvel world-building film, great action film, great martial arts film. It's everything I wanted it to be. It's everything I hoped it would be, and it delivers everything that I thought I was going to get, but I was kind of worried going into going... Maybe I'm not going to get some of this and I'm going to be somewhat disappointed. I didn't get that. I got the film I wanted and I hoped for. Hopefully this, I don't know, nine minute video or whatever, explain to you why my opinion is my opinion and why I like it. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Again, I'm allowed to have my own opinion. You can just stop watching these videos or unsub. It's not that hard to understand.